Welcome back, Zero K fans. I'm Nanalisa Don. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a map I don't think I've done before. 15 platforms. It's featuring Ezeride on Cloakbots versus Kingstead on Spiderbots. Which will be interesting because this map is... I mean, it has some cliffy bits, but there's no way from one platform to another other than the ramps. Or, okay, I guess the sides of the walls and the ramps. Yeah, this is one of those weird maps that uses void water and it's just, like, fog all the way down, so... Yeah, it's it's different. It's also a matchmaker map, which I find, as Pet Turtle points out in this in the replays spectator chat, why is this map in competitive? Like why? This is, I've seen this map used a lot too. But yeah, for some reason it's become a matchmaker map, and I don't know why. So with that, Israel Kingstead are well. Okay, Kingstead's obviously doing the spider thing. You're setting up the setting up the fleas to scout out. He's a ride, on the other hand, going forward to assault. I mean, the things I kind of expect with spiders, we're probably going to see some ambushes off of these little little raised sections. You know, dropping down with a venom or something. Although I don't see Kingstad really going for any major push when it comes to any kind of military presence. They're just expanding. As is his ride, both players really just setting up their economies, not really too worried about any of this stuff off the cliffs. I mean, is ride mostly just trying to make sure that they know exactly what's going on when it comes to what their opponents are going to be up to. You know, check out, stake out the good metal extractors and that kind of thing. It's not really much beyond that. Also, I gotta say, I do appreciate the fact that the metal extractors are effective are quite well labeled like which ones are heavy you have you have this big thing although admittedly i guess that's well no you don't have to do it that way the stuff that determines the power of the metal extractor and what determines the texture on the ground for the metal extractor are totally separate so there's no reason for that to be entirely as clear as it is at any rate his ride is I'd say in a reasonably stronger position to begin with. I mean, they have, they have a better sense of what's been staked out. They're rapidly expanding compared to Kingstead. And they've also gotten the first 3.5 metal extractors. Well, two 3.5 metal extractors. So, yeah, Isserite is really managing to get ahead very quickly. Kingstead, on the other hand, relying quite a bit on overdrive more than anything to maintain some kind of parity. But that's not going to last for long. Especially, again, as while Kingstead has scouted out what's going on near Izzeride's base, Izzeride has staked out the rest of the map. Izzeride knows exactly what's going on across all the really key parts. Now, to be fair, Van and Redback coming in here, but Izzeride knows, okay, Kingstead is expanding over to the western 3.5. So that's cool. Oh, wait, that... <laughs> Izzeride pointing in the chat they won against Golda, which was another replay I was considering doing. But, huh. Well, anyway, at this point, Kingstad is starting to get their expansions going as they are getting raided quite heavily. Izzeride coming in over here and they not able to escape entirely with the glaze, but over on the north side, they are able to start getting rid of some of the metal extractors, are able, able to start getting rid of really a lot of stuff. And the glaive is really doing its part, whereas you know, everything over here is... It's building up reasonably okay. We have the Lotus, which... Should be able to do a, well, should be able to do a job of dissuading an assault, but not really going to be enough. Glaive, unfortunately, does go down in two, two shots at the picket, so that doesn't last. At the same time, though, the Venom Redback is very much risking its own existence. Trying to come after this expansion that Israelite's commander is quite well defending. And yeah, if that Venom Redback is gone, there's not a whole lot that's left to defend against Glaives. Oh, okay, there's Lotuses, but not a whole lot of mobile units to defend against it. So that is hmm, actually kind of questionable with the advantages now. Kingstead's kind of taking taking quite the jump, having you know taken out this entire 1.7 platform, and having the thing is that there's, Israel has only taken two of the 3.5s. They haven't taken much else. They are now taking the 1.7s, but that's not necessarily going to be enough. Now, granted, with the, the Reaver coming in, it'll help, but Kingstead's commander is just far too powerful. Glaive's trying to deal with it, but with that Lotus, you need, like, 
six to eight glaives, eight glaives really is a reasonable minimum to deal with a commander. And when you consider that there's a bunch of support forces, that's not going to happen. King said, well, they are really pushing hard. I mean, two Venoms, Redback, and a commander. It's upgraded. That was basically upgraded just for the Nano Lathe. Yeah, is Rod going to be having to deal with quite a bit in terms of the offense? But at the same time, they have Stingers up, they have Lotuses up. The Glaives probably won't last too long. But the Ronin were being built, and a gunship plant also being built. I don't see a whole lot of things that the gunship plant is being built for yet. Ah, Mass Locust. Okay, that's interesting. Redbacks do a good job against Locusts, especially considering the amount of high ground the Redbacks can get. But I think with 20 Locusts, it won't really be a problem. That'll be just fine. Same time, though, the stakeout over the north side has been destroyed. I mean, the fleas, they're not going to worry about anything. There's no glaives that are going to come there, so yeah. And flea down here also being somewhat damaged, but talking enough, King Tide, however, coming in here, coming into the 1.7 platform and losing you know, some of the momentum of his commander, but the glaives getting all stunned out. Damage has been done. No real units lost for Kingstad. Maybe a vent. Oh, no, actually, the Venoms were lost, and that is pretty big. The Redbacks are still a massive threat to the Glaives and a massive threat to all the Metal Extractors, but he's a ride, and they're doing okay when it comes to their Metal Extractors. Doing okay. Not super great, but okay. Of course, the Locusts being built up were about a quarter of the way there. But that is still going to be there. That is going to be... Is Ride losing a fair bit of metal? It's Kingstad managing to get... Well, let's see, 3.5, 3.1, they have... Not quite getting this platform over to the north, which Isride is going for. So Isride will at least have another 6 metal per second to their name in a fairly short while. But having lost the 1.7 platform, that's you now 7 metal per second right there. That they just lost with really no contest. So many locusts are we looking at? Half a dozen locusts along with some gnats. Kind of a risky move. There aren't a whole lot of locusts, and they have been spotted. Kingstad knows they're coming. The Redbacks, again, are a reasonably good choice of dealing with them. Though it may not be enough in terms of the numbers. And there's the Nats coming in here to make sure it's less reasonable. And there goes the Redback. Getting stunned by the Nats. Still got rid of three Locusts in the process. Which, for cost, is totally worth it. Like, two Redbacks for two Locusts. Kingstad's still kind of ahead. And the Locusts are unfortunately not that together or obeying the laws of physics. Reasonably, I mean, I guess physics is optional. Oh, there's the corpse. We and right in the middle of King's Dead's base. Not good airtime. Still, Israel has managed to actually get their economy relatively on par. I mean, the caretakers aren't. Oh, the caretakers are all going for the gunship plant. That's why. That's been sorted out, but. Still, Locust Nat. What is it going to do? Well, it's going to go over here. It's going to try its best to get rid of some of these Lotuses, but it's just not enough. There's way too much of that. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't realize that. This map actually... The fog is where the gunships end up going, so... That's actually really good for stealth. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. That's a really... I guess it explains why the gunships were used here. Because we don't see gunships used very often these days. They get used occasionally, but... Yeah, I forgot 15 platforms is a map where you can literally hide the gunships in the fog. Because they just end up underneath the fog. Is that just like solid texture or something? Well, whatever. It's fog. They can't be spotted. That works. <laughs> wow, Dime Friend. Shadow Fury showing off how ZK is a no skill game. I mean. I don't know what to say to that. I'm not sure what part you're referencing. I mean, this map is kind of a silly map overall. Oh, yeah, it also slings. Well, this map's kind of a silly map largely because... Well, look at the way it's set up now. Like, there's not a whole lot that you can do other than just go from platform to platform taking them. And Ezerai doesn't have a great position to take multiple platforms. I mean, they had the slings, which are going to get rid of the stingers, but... Again, that's a lot of defenses. That's just, you know, this pork wall you have to get through. And once you get through that, 
And then you have to get through the next pork wall, and then the next pork wall. I can see why the gunships were used just for trying to bypass that, but clearly that's not the way things are going. And it, um, what the? Okay, uh, apparently we're playing Pokemon now. <laughs> More numbers under above a hundred aren't properly rendered. That's the strangest thing. Okay, what is that? Just the like? Yeah, I think it's just the ellipses are being screwy. Okay, well, bug report to be had, I suppose, but not right now. Right now, we have scorpions coming in from Ride. Coming in to break the, well, possibly break the pork, definitely break the pre-pork stuff. I didn't, why didn't I see the Strider Hub? Oh, it's right there along with the rest of the caretakers. That's why. Still with the scorpion coming in here. That's, that'll help, but Kingstad has managed to get a pretty solid base on the rest of the map. And Kingstad themselves, what are they building? They have fusion plants. They have crabs coming up. They have no other production structures, so there's that. King's Dad is probably not going to be too able to deal with this stuff, but then on the other hand, yeah, that stinger's being quite healed. There's another stinger behind it. I mean, the slings aren't doing a bad job. One more volley should get rid of the stinger. And indeed it does. But of course, there's still counterforces coming in here. Still the fact that the flea is able to see a lot. There's still that the north side here has got wiped out by a couple of redbacks. So he's right again, falling behind when it comes to economy, but they might be able to stun things out with the Scorpion. Now, there it goes, stunning out the Stingers, and the Commander, and the Shield Generator, which is really nice. So the question is going to be, how well are we able to get... Uh, how well is the Stinger going to... or Scorpion going to be able to get rid of the rest of the stuff? And it gets rid of the Commander! Doesn't get rid of any... Well, okay, it does get rid of some of the Hermits, but the Hermits are the main problem. They are really pushing back the Slings. Most of the Slings did go down to the Hermits for... And that is going to be the big problem. Like going forward, there isn't really a way to deal with these stingers that isn't going to get destroyed because now the slings are being contested by the crab, and the crab is going to be doing a fine job dealing with them, and the stingers are just not really available for anything. Now, granted, we do have to switch over to air to bomb out the stingers, which not a bad idea, all things considered. Should be able to get rid of both stingers, but yeah, like I said, this is still very pork heavy, very defense heavy. Though, given that Israel has so much in their economy, that's pretty cool. They're just going, you know what? I need to change what I'm doing. Pop! Drop another factory. Do something different. Kind of expect to see popping an air pad, but... No, really, where's the air pad? If they're going to go for this, go for the air pad. Or another scorpion. Why not? Actually, come to think of it, those stingers are the only real defense the scorpion might be scared of. Everything beyond that, it can just power through. All these lotuses? Nah, that's not a big deal. So, really, not a whole lot is threatening them besides that one stinger and the crab. And if the crab gets stunned out, well, it's kind of over. Although the problem, of course, being the fleas will spot out the stingers. They all are... Oh, scorpion as they always do. Some of the scorpion you know, maintains its cloaking. Oh, and a widow is up as well. So, Izzeride... Yeah, Izzeride is ready for this. Oh, never mind. They are theoretically ready for this, but the Widow got spotted in time. Got destroyed. And two Widows were required to get rid of that Scorpion, so it is not getting stunned. A couple of enemies would have been, I guess, handy as support forces, but now one of two Widows, and somehow they both got killed. So I don't think there was a lapse in judgment. I think that's the cloak vanishing and coming back might have been an artifact of me. Yeah, it's an artifact of me changing which player I'm looking at. That did not happen in game. Oh. Did not notice. We have gunships over here. Had gunships over here. Well, no, still have gunships. Had a fusion plant over in Kingstead's base. Gunships were ever finding their way through the fog, but they were spotted out, and those swifts are making short work of those locusts. Just eating them to death. And the scorpion. Is, oh, actually, the scorpion doing more against the swifts than the locusts. Surprisingly, as the locusts wouldn't have been moving that much. And the fusion plant, is it going to die? It is not going to die. Managed to get saved just in time, unlike Kingstad's. But Kingstad is going for a couple revenants, possibly to try to get their revenge on this. Come in with a lot of locusts, or come in with the revenants, take out the fusion reactor outright. Well, this fusion reactor, not the new one. These are doing surprisingly well, considering they have considerably less economy. But King's Dead looks like they are well set up to take advantage of their 20 metal per second advantage. 
Finally. I mean, they have the gunships. They're getting a Strider hub. Getting those revenants up, which could be effective. I mean, Izzerite does have a lot of reclaim to work with right now, having basically gotten this massive metal donation. And not to mention having retaken the 1.7 platform next to their base. Of course, this is where the revenants really come in, tearing apart this 3.5 platform over to the north side of Izzerite's base. Izzerite needs to get rid of this army pretty quickly, and even then, there's still more where that came from. The Swifts should be able to hold off the Revenants for now, but, of course, Kingstead still has the economic advantage, still has the territory advantage, still has a reasonable amount of anti-air to stop any more bomber runs from coming in. So this is still a bit of a slog for Izzerite. They are not in anywhere near a position they can just take out this army and call it a day. Of course, the Scorpions can find their way in one of the bases, or find their way around the back, actually, because, man, remember, these cliffs can be scaled by spiders. They can just go around the back, around the side, take out some of these farther back expansions, and it might actually be able to tear apart the forces, at which point Kingstad would just have this one army. Overall, though, the players are relatively even when it comes to attrition. They're relatively even when it comes to economy. Relatively even when it comes to metal usage. Army value is also dead heat. It's just territories in favor of Kingstad, and that means Izzerite has to be the one attacking. Like, Kingstead can wait this out. They can just keep building more and more and more. Izzerite can't. Izzerite has to get rid of this army. They have to come in and assault themselves. They have to just have to get rid of the Revenants, move in with the Scorpions, get rid of all the economy in the back lines. But that's going to be tricky. Because there are so many defenses that have been built up, and of course, Izzerite doesn't know where the fleas are set up. Granted, there aren't any right now, but Izzerite doesn't know where the fleas are, whether the fleas are... Certainly got to deal with that Widow as well, but that Widow may not matter. In fact, probably won't considering the Revenants are being much bigger threats to the Scorpions. Although, there it is, the Scorpions coming in, tearing apart the... Stunning out the Revenants. At least briefly, but it's enough. Should save them. On top of the Gremlin coming in here. One Scorpion is almost dead. It does ultimately go down. And the Reavers come in to save the day. On top of that, Scorpion, 580 HP, but it is not dead. And the crab looking in a bit of an uncomfortable position with all the reavers around it. The reavers, the knife, the scorpion. Yeah, it's able to get rid of some of these forces, but it's not going to survive. And with that, the 1.7 platform once again becomes a haven for reclaim. Is right. What do they have now? 2,000? 4,000 metal worth of reclaim right outside of their base. They're doing fine. King's Dead's assault was a massive failure. They switched off to a crow on top of that. Very risky maneuver. The ultimate much less risky, makes a lot more sense using this, using that to deal with the Scorpions. But if the Scorpion comes in and has his D-Gun charged up, gets... Actually, he doesn't even need to get rid of the Stinger. Honestly, he just needs to go past this. But it looks like it will be going straight to the Stinger. And... Will it be able to D-Gun in? Well, certainly... No, it's not going to bother. There's only an army to D-Gun against. It's a good move. I mean, degunning over here might not have been a bad idea, but then again, that might be the later plan, is to degun over this platform. Although, I don't know why Izzerite's not attacking. I mean, they know the other owl. They know what's going on. I mean, they don't have a lot of reclaim, mind you. Sorry, they don't have a lot of radar up here, mind you. They've got radar where they can. So, they're going to be able to spot at least whatever's coming in offensively, but, of course, for their own offense, they don't really know. Is where he's a ride going for some of the peripheral platforms, taking out... Well, I'm going to try to take out these Lotuses. This is not going to work out. There simply aren't enough forces to take out the Lotuses. Scorpions are in the back line. Two of them. The third one is under construction. This last one is very heavily damaged. And unfortunately for Rizrod, they seem to have lost all of their forces. All their air force was destroyed thanks to that chainsaw. It's a major issue. On top of that, that between the Nats and the Crows, Izzerite has lost their entire front line. So Izzerite losing their army, which, again, Izzerite, okay, right now they have an economic advantage thanks to the reclaim, but they were running kind of behind. Still, though, attrition advantage. Army value advantage, still 3k. And most of that army value for, Iz for Kingstad is this Crow. So if that Crow goes down, it's going to be a massive loss. Of course, whether or not that crow goes down will remain to be seen, but that will still be an issue when the Nats come in. Ooh, Nats come in here, but am I, am I a Screamer? Really? Yes, Screamer! Bit of a waste to use it on Nats, but I guess that's why you have the Nats there, to waste the Screamer missiles. 
So Kingstad should be well aware that is a no-go zone. There, there's no fly zone here. Like this, this our Artemis not, was called Screamer back in the day. <laughs> it's now the Artemis. Made, an AMI much prefer. But where is this going to end up? I mean, Crow is coming in here, tearing apart all of these rides' peripheral economy, and Kingstad. They've been able to solidly hold on to everything they have had for the majority of the game. Ezerite has just been reclaiming like mad. And the defense has been on point. Oh, and Kingstad coming into the stream to watch them grind away against Ezerite in a replay that happened a few days ago. Because that's exactly what's happening. Ezerite is coming in here and there is no real indication about who is in the, in the lead. I mean, Izzeride has less territory. Kingstad has a stronger economy, but Izzeride still has an army value advantage. But again, Izzeride kind of has to be the one to attack here. So Kingstad has been attacking a lot, which is not the best situation. Oops. Okay, but Izzeride is well aware of the crow. I mean, it visually you can't see it, but radar does show it in the fog. So, you know, visual stealth. Oh, and Izzeride going for the Spider Factory as well, which... Interesting choice. I mean, I guess you could try to use Tarantulas against the Crow. They're a reasonably strong anti-air unit. Or use the Crab against the Crow, because why not? I mean, as you can see, it will hit! <laughs> crow does not move fast enough to avoid the, the Crab shots. That's actually... I, I always like that. That's part of the game I love. Things just hit things. Boom! Oh, I, I missed. Crow managed to get out of the way. But still, yeah. But why not just, just shoot the thing? So Crow forced to retreat, and at the same time, Ezeride is getting a couple scorpions here. Taking out a preferable expansion, retaking it for themselves. Of course, the scorpions are not... I don't know why they're going straight from platform to platform. I really don't know why they aren't just going along the sides here. And then up along the sides, surprisingly. Like, that's something I just do not understand. Same time, the Scorpion is coming in here from Kingstad, and there should be an ultimatum around here somewhere. There was one, for sure. But I don't see it. I must be missing it, because an ultimatum was built, and it... Well, wasn't really necessary at this point. Bit of a Bit of a pain. Eh, yeah, the Artemis not really managing to do much, was it? Going for the gnats. Not really going for anything else. I mean, the crow is not really able to get in the main base as a result. Nice area denial. That's that's what it does. Denies areas. Of course, at this point, is a ride annexing a little bit. There's just it's one of those, what do I build? Oh, you build a nuke silo. That... Yeah, forgiven how porky this game is, that makes sense. Scorpion did manage to get rid of this northeast, but then, you know, it's going from platform to platform. Now with another Scorpion to deal with. I, mean, I think his red would have been able to deal with this five minutes ago, just with Scorpions. Like, just walk in with the Scorpions and tear up it's all apart. That... That would have likely done the trick. I mean, at this point, it's a little late. Kingstad, they have two Scorpions of their own. It's way too late. His ride cannot hope to win with that. I mean, Nuke has a bit of a desperation move. It'll be another four and a half minutes before it actually does anything, and quite frankly, I'm not sure if it wouldn't just be faster to go into the Scorpions. I mean, honestly, just dot, like, I don't know, like I said, use the fact that these are cliffs. Get around to that way, and then come in the other side, and where you're least expected, or go around the back. All the way around the back, into the base, and then you just kill them. I don't know, it makes sense to me. At any rate, Kingstad managing to, or Israel managing to get into this one platform here. Forcing back the Scorpions as well, which is a nice opening for Israel's own Scorpions, if they were to take it. Looks like no, the Scorpions are being pulled back for defense, which I can't say I totally blame. It's pretty clear at this point that Israel's entire plan right now is just build the Trinity, use that to kill everything, and then win. Ooh, blast wings are being built up. Blast wings are being destroyed after being built up. Hey! Artemis is doing his job! Getting rid of the crow! About time! Oof. Well, the crow's down. 
King Stead's lost the majority of their army value as a result. And the Artemis is actually managing to do a relatively decent job on top of the Scorpions being able to get rid of these forces. But unfortunately, the Scorpions do not have their, their D-gun for the other Scorpions. And the other Scorpions will probably take them down. Yeah, there's the Scorpions. Where is that D-gun? There's the D-gun. Yep, there's Israel Scorpions being taken down by the Ultimatum. Hey, the Ultimatum is actually doing its job. And this Trinity is not the priority for construction. Absolutely not. There isn't an out defense. The Scorpions have been destroyed. Ezerite, I don't know what they have left to work with. I mean, if they managed to hold on defensively, they might have been able to make this work with the Trinity. But right now, I'm not sure. Isn't there a targeting priority thing on here? Overkill prevention. No, there is no targeting priority here. And because of that... Yeah, well, not because of that, actually. Izzerad was behind, economically, the majority of the game. They were doing really well despite that. But, yeah, the Scorpions were kind of the only thing keeping them alive. Although I agree the Artemis was not doing a great job, it still got rid of the Crow. Although, admittedly, it didn't get rid of all of... If it hadn't gotten rid of the Gnats, it would have gotten rid of all the Rapiers, the Harpies, and then it would have been easier for the Scorpions to save their D-Gun for later. I still think though Israel could have won like 10 minutes prior if they had just snuck their scorpions around here, started destroying the back lines. Especially after they got rid of the army full of revenants. So I don't I don't know. I feel like Israel got a little bit scared because of the fact that there were fleas detecting the strider or detecting the scorpions earlier on. And I can see that, but at the same time, they had owls. They, they knew what was up here. So I don't know. I don't understand that. I mean, he's right in the chat right now. He's right. What, what are your thoughts as to why it was that you didn't do this? Like, oh, right. I forgot to change out the tournament delay. It's going to be two minutes before you hear what I said. Well, anyway, that was that. So I guess just comment in the YouTube video. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and have a good night, everyone. And I hope you learned why 15 platforms is a weird map. I don't know why we're playing that as a competitive map, but so it goes. Anyway, bye.